Welcome again to Evening Prayers from Stamford Methodist Circuit on Thursday the 20th of June with me, Tony Law. Wherever you are and whatever time of day it is for you, you're very welcome in our online community. Today is the longest day and it's also World Refugee Day. We shall remember those. This week, guided by our church's reading schedule, we're reading in St Luke's Gospel chapters 9 and 10. We bring our thoughts and prayers to bear on this important time for our country. Guided by the Church's Joint Public Issues team, there's a link to this resource in the credits this week. Today, we conclude the account of the mass mission of the 72 disciples. As we'll hear, they rejoice at what they had seen of God's power in action. Recognising God's sovereignty and acting as agents of the kingdom, Jesus is charged to them, remember, was to tell people the kingdom of God has come near to them. These are issues for this time in our nation's life. But first, let's pray. Lord, may the gospel be to us more than mere words. May your Holy Spirit empower and enable us to live the kingdom. Give us the wisdom and vision which lead to the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And be with us now in this quiet time together. Amen. And so we hear our reading, which today is from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, and beginning at verse 17. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, and no one knows who the Father is except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then he turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings wanted to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Our Methodist prayer handbook this year has taken the theme Hidden Treasures. And there is a thread in the New Testament of what is called the Messianic Secret, knowledge of Christ which is not, as it were, in the public domain. Carried to extremes, this becomes unhealthy, and one of the battles fought in the early church was about this, which we call Gnosticism. Gnosticism just means we know something, you don't. But think for a few moments of the times when the Gospels tell us Jesus enjoined, let's say, discretion at least. After some of the healing miracles, for example, he would tell the healed person or the disciples not to talk about what had happened. Whether they took any notice of that is another matter. On at least one occasion, we're told that when people ignored this, that contributed to the spread of his reputation. And it was a reputation that wasn't always helpful, like when the same crowd wanted to make him king in human terms. Secret knowledge, though, isn't what Jesus is praying about in this exultant prayer. It's a prayer of rejoicing. And the central theme is that the knowledge of who Christ is, what he's doing, what God is doing, isn't something that reveals itself through logic or analysis or all the things that educated people do. That's many of us, of course, and I include myself. It's an echo of Jesus' saying that whoever can't receive the kingdom like a little child does can't enter it. You find that, for example, in St Mark's Gospel, chapter 10. It's about an instinctive understanding of who Jesus is, what he's about, an instinctive response an instinctive living in the kingdom. It's not that the kingdom of heaven is illogical or unreasonable. 
But I think the thinking, the analysis, the logic comes later. The young man who came to Jesus, having kept all the logical practices since childhood, knew that he still lacked something. So did Wesley, as we referred to on Tuesday. We acknowledge and benefit enormously from the work of those whose thinking informs our understanding of faith. But God claims us sooner or later through the heart and the spirit, as well as and possibly ahead of the mind. You can't prove the truth of Jesus. Only respond to him and worship. And Jesus too gives his exultant and excited disciples a warning. Don't rejoice, he says, at what you've been able to achieve. He might have said, it's not you, it's God working through you. But rejoice, he says, that you have found your way into the kingdom. As our joint public issues team reminds us, our ultimate hope is in Christ and his work, not in human actions and systems. Yet as we trust in God's sovereignty, we're sent out like the 72 to act as agents of his kingdom. Another hymn says his angels here are human, not the shining hosts above. And the drumbeats of his army, if we don't mind the military metaphor, the drumbeats of his army are the heartbeats of our love. As we live the kingdom, we make it more real for ourselves and for others, for our often broken world, one action, one conversation at a time. So our hymn. In Fred Kahn's For the Healing of the Nations, we pray to grow in God's likeness as we were created, that by our response and service, earth its destiny may find. In Singing the Faith, this is 696. Refugee Day today is an international day designated by the United Nations to honour refugees around the globe. <clears throat> it falls each year on the 20th of June and celebrates the strength and courage of people who have been forced to flee their home country to escape conflict or persecution. So a prayer for today. Almighty and merciful God, whose son became a refugee and had no place to call his own. Look with mercy on those who today are fleeing from danger, homeless and hungry. Bless those who work to bring them relief. 
inspire generosity and compassion in all our hearts and guide the nations of the world towards that day when all will rejoice in your kingdom of justice and of peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy and merciful God, you have created us all in your image. We exist because of the radical welcome that you have granted each one of us. You have called us to be your hands and feet in the world, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, and to set the captives free. Hear our prayer, O God, for peace, for justice, for community. Hear our prayer for your will to be done on this our earth as it is in heaven. God be with us now, empower us, guide us, sustain us, and glorify us in your name. Amen. And a prayer for the longest day. Creator God, you breathed this world into being, the harmony of nature, the cycle of rain and sun, warmth and cold, the grandeur of scenery, the soaring eagle, and the smallest insect. Thank you for this world, which reminds us that your creative breath is still and always alive and active, and for the warmth of your love sustaining this world and all that is in it. Yet we know that we do not always live as if under your care. Grant us clear thinking, right action, and a gentle lifestyle. We confess our sin and the sins of our community in the misuse of your creation. God our Father, forgive us for the times when we have used your gifts carelessly and acted ungratefully. In your mercy, forgive us and help us. Renew us in freedom and energy to live in your kingdom's way. Amen. And we share the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you as always for sharing with us this evening. Our blessing for this time particularly. Loving God, we seek for your will to be done and your kingdom to be achieved in this our country. Be with us as we consider options, weigh arguments and assess claims and candidates. Prompt us to listen to the voices on the margins, to the cry of the earth, and to those who reach a different conclusion from ours. Help us to remember your command to love our neighbour as ourself and to follow your example. Lord our God, stimulate our minds, stir our hearts and sanctify our choosing. And be with us alongside, beyond and within, now and always. Amen. <laughs>